I just got the question about a week ago, something like that. Well, two of my, one of my colleagues uh, <clears throat> was on holiday, so I'm sorry if uh, it's uh, done in a little bit of a hurry. Um, but I hope it will open discussions, and that may be the most important thing. Uh, how do we start it? Um, this one? Okay. There we go. So, look, if you have other ideas, please get in, and, uh, because I had not, not, not the time to, to show it to you and to uh, see if you agree. This is, well, I have some problems. It was very nice on my uh, computer, but not on yours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know what's happening. What is happening with Swedish? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, okay. So, but um, <clears throat> I, I'm even some of the things are, are, are missing. Okay. I, I think the, the the practice data and the practice strategy is missing on the on the on the lower side. So what the, what we have in Belgium is we for the first time, and I will show you have some nice and interesting national data, which are aimed for developing national strategy and which uh, are giving some very important clues for politicians to see what will happen in the future and what will be their priorities in, uh, in, uh, in politics. We hope we will see that they will see and that they will take some action. Then we have the regions which also are especially interested in prevent preventive medicine and they have their own data and they have their own regional strategy with setting priorities and looking if these things are working and they are they have some local groups um, which they can support and deliver the data to and which they ask to follow their priorities. And then we have no local data uh, and we have very little practice data, which are more voluntary based, which can be used in the practice, but which are not used for national strategy, for instance. So what I will mainly show you, because I think this is the most important new development, it is not yet published, but it will come soon in, in the next weeks or month, I hope, um, is a GP performance report, which uh, has been made by uh, the National Council on Quality Improvement. Um, and we had a lot of experts, and I'm, I participated as one of it. I'm not the author. Uh, I'm, I'm looking um, Pascal Meus, who is here is the main statistician and the main author of, um, of the report. But he did some very interesting things and he needed a group of experts to get feedback and choose the right indicators and have a lot of discussion about it. So we, be we came into a conceptual framework with three axes, being the patient focus, uh, being uh, things about our indicators about appropriate and qualitative care, and then uh, especially, which is uh, one of the main problems we have uh, seen uh, developing is the viability, viable capacity and professionalism of uh, GPs um, within the uh, coming future. And then we had equity. I'm sorry, I can, can I go up? Uh, we have equity being some, something we wanted to, to look at in uh, every axe and, and to keep in mind. And, um, so i just give you a short summary. It's a, a report of 150 pages and i show you one or two pages of it. So when we look at foc uh, patient focus, um, we have three main topics being accessibility, continuity and acceptability for the patient. I'm sorry, I only have the French presentation. It is translated yet in Dutch, not yet in English, but we hope the uh, government will do that and publish it uh, on the website, so then I can forward to you uh, the whole report. So what we know from um, uh, uh, a four-year survey of the population is that there is a, a large satisfaction with uh, uh, primary care and GPs more, uh, and especially about 70 to 80% of patients say they are satisfied or very satisfied with general practice general practice and so this is a very good result. What we see is that about 14% of patients do not go to primary care at all within one year um, and that's a little bit weak and it's uh, very different from the regions. I will show that slide on the end of my presentation. So um, the patient, the accessibility, uh, there we look to financial uh, matters and then we see that uh, the average uh, patient is paying uh, himself uh, to attend primary care as 143 euros a year um, and we have about eight and ten thousand uh, eight GPs and ten thousand inhabitants who um, have a contract with the government 
to respect um, uh, the, the prices and to make sure that uh, uh, patients are paying uh, uh, like is uh, agreed with government and, G and, and GPs uh, um, every year and that uh, they keep to this, uh, to this level of, of, uh, of prices. Okay, um, so this 12%, uh, okay, 12% has no uh, contact with uh, 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 primary care within one year and 21% has, of the population has no contact with his GP in, the, in one year, which is average. I think this is the normal thing in most countries. Uh, so that's why you see with the symbols, it's very easy to read. Um, um, we have about 4.28 um, consultations or contacts with the GP every year as a mean for a patient. That's, uh, I think, very different from country to country. Um, that's uh, uh, so very difficult to compare. And then we have some capitation fee, which is now uh, paid to GPs for about 46% of uh, the patients he has. Um, that's le less than half, and it's very different from one region to another. In the French-speaking part of Belgium, it's far less than in the Dutch-speaking part of Belgium. For instance, there is a, really a, a big difference, and that's what you see here. So there is no homogeneous geographical spread of it. Um, and, but you see that it is rising, right? that uh, the, the number of uh, capitation uh, fees paid to GPs are, are rising every year. So you, you have a nice overview of patient focus um, uh, and, and some of the indicators we, which we have chosen. Quality will be more interesting for you all. Um, and there we see that 73% uh, of um, patients at risk and patients above, above 65 uh, get their uh, um, vaccination for uh, flu vaccination every year, which we think is uh, rather good. Uh, it's uh, far less for um, uh, screening for uh, by mammography. Only 62% of people get a mammogram uh, within every two years, and of them, uh, only 48 get the right uh, uh, screening mammography. Others get uh, diagnostic mammographies, and even there, we see some inhomogeneous regional spreading uh, of these indicators. Um, um, so that's, that's not good. Uh, one very interesting one uh, and a new one for me was that about 6.4% 6 of uh, patients get overexposed every year to radiology, radiology and to, uh, uh, to um, uh, um, I don't know the English term, to x-rays, yes. Eh? So they are overexposed, they get a too high rate of uh, of uh, radio radiology and uh, about 51% of patients get at least one uh, radiogram of whatever kind uh, every year. Oh. That's, a lot. Huh? That's a lot. That's a lot. That's really a lot. Yes. A lot. Yes. And then and even a, this is very a, high. Do you have x-ray uh, x-rays in x-ray possibilities in your surgery? Um, only a very small number of surgeries has his, uh, does his own x-rays because uh, it's uh, very strongly regulated uh, and uh, regulations make it very difficult for GPs to do it on their own. Yeah. So they have, most of the GPs refer for radiology. But they don't have the power plants in Belgium. So, so, <laughs> so you have to give the people the daily allowance of the well, that's, uh, <laughs> well, that's another way of looking at it. <laughs> Okay, but uh, I think this, for, well, you see, if you look to some of these indicators that you easily see which will be the priorities for uh, government and politics to, to put into practice. Mm -hmm. uh, and for us as uh, National College to, to discuss with our colleagues. Mm -hmm. So matter on quality is the prescription of antibiotics. Um, I show you some other uh, way of, of looking at it and, and giving feedback even to individ individual GPs, but it's not good in Belgium. We know for a long time it's not good. We thought it was getting better, but it's not changing a lot, uh, even with a lot of uh, uh, energy put in it, into it. Um, on the other hand, for diabetes, I think diabetes patients in Belgium are rather uh, are fairly good um, followed up, um, depending on the indicator you choose. But for instance, hemoglobin uh, A1C is done in, a more, in a nearly 90% of people uh, at least once in every 15 months. Um, 
and, uh, but for a uh, test of urine for albumin, for instance, it's only 30%, uh, and test with the ophthalmologist is only 30% also. So, um, these are some of the, I, I think, well, we have some other ones, but uh, I think these are the most in, important and most interesting ones. Um, okay. I have some interesting things on uh, self-empowerment of patients in detail in the report, but I, I, I did not know it would be interesting to show them, but uh, we, we can certainly discuss them, uh, and, and I can show you some, some slides to the book. So the biggest problem is the problem of um, uh, working force. Uh, what we know now is that the working force is now fa uh, fairly high even. We have one in 10,000 uh, GPs, something like that for the moment, and you see we are in the sun over there. And they are fairly good uh, spread all over the country. We have little places for the moment where we have a lack of GPs. Um, we know nearly exactly uh, that this means about uh, <coughs> uh, a thousand uh, patients for each GP. And uh, this means a number of con contacts, 5,664 contacts on average a year, which, which makes me really a full-time doctor <laughs> if I see this. Um, and I'm really in the, as, a, as being an age, I'm really in the, in the, in the spot because I'm 51 and three years and three months for uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really thunderstorm. I will not show you other. I have some other slides, but we are we are expecting about a quarter of GPs uh, uh, stopping within the next 10 years, and we have no, not enough workforce to replace them, not at all. Uh, so we are getting a really problems, especially on uh, duty calls and things like that. We will have huge problems within uh, the next five to 10 years. So this is what he is earning uh, every year. And then we have um, uh, 91 of uh, GPs are accredited. This means they are following some uh, continuous medical education every year. And about 64%, only 64% gets a fee for his in, uh, using informatics within his practice, which is very low. Uh, okay, so this is the, the summary of our national report. And the question is, what will we do with it on a local level, of course? Eh? So we are, I think patients are, are um, <clears throat> well served and uh, um, that on, on that level, everything is all right in Belgium. On quality, we have some clouds, um, but we have suddenly a thunderstorm coming uh, within uh, the next 10 years on uh, the, the working force and the problems there, um, which will be threatening for quality, I'm sure. Uh, so what, is, what we are asking ourselves now with National College and what we are presenting to the government is to think about possibilities to use similar data uh, and indicators for local or regional feedback into umbrella organization, local umbrella organizations or GPs and to try to ask them to work with the practices within their region on their own priorities because I think it may be different from a region to region. I will show you some slides about it. Uh, about it. Um, uh, and, and even evaluate uh, <clears throat> For instance, the per persons, per percentage of group practices uh, of GPs having more than 1,250 uh, patients, uh, patient contacts a year. That's the definition of being at least, of, of, of getting as a GP, a working GP into, the, into the, the analysis. And there you see really that there is a north-south axis uh, of um, a lot more, even one in three or one and a half of GPs working in group practices in the north and nearly and, and less than one in 10 in the south of uh, Belgium. So this means immediately that you have another way, another culture, uh, and that you will have other priorities, I think, uh, for those local groups to, uh, to, to look into if they, they look into quality, if they look into uh, uh, <clears throat> some strategies to change things and li uh, like that. Yeah. Another example of uh, difference, local differences is this is between the different provinces. Um, the number of patients who had no contact, I, I think it's the, uh, who had no contact with his GP. And then you see that, for instance, in Brussels, you have 25% of patients not having a contact with a GP. And the west of Flanders, near the coast where I live, it's less than 2.5% having 
not having had a contact with his GP in the last year. So there is a, a huge difference, uh, which makes it clear that there are other problems in Brussels to, uh, to look into than in uh, some rural areas uh, near the coast, for instance, and in the French and in the Dutch speaking. So I think it's very important to have, for the first time, this data and now trying to, to look into them and, and, and to translate them to uh, a more local uh, level. And this is what we, we want to, to ask to the, the government to, to look into it. We, we have an, a little bit of tradition and uh, uh, feedback, uh, especially on anti antibiotics, into the practices. So this is more specific your question, I think, Sam, that is, uh, do you have something like that? Um, and if you want to see um, an example of it, then you can go to the, the website, it is in French or in Dutch, it's not in English, I'm sorry, of an anonymized uh, feedback, uh, recent feedback of antibiotic prescription. I had hoped to get onto the internet and to follow this, but I don't know if it will be possible. There we go. Okay. Um, marvelous. I know, where is it? Here, yeah, that's it. Anonymized. Is this one? So the, every GP gets, every year I think, or every two years he gets a report like this. I just go a little bit down because I think the most, it's, it's some explication in, of how it is done and what is expected of it and the, about the methodology. Uh, this is the, uh, the number of patients and the number of um, capi patients paying capitation fee, for instance, which is in it. Uh, but the most interesting one is, for instance, this one. This is a plot box about the use of uh, different antibiotics. And uh, so this is the, the use of amoxicillin. This is the use of amoxicillin with clavulan. Uh, uh, this is uh, um, uh, uh, macrolides, for instance, uh, tetracyclines, uh, kinolomus. So there you see uh, uh, what is the... Um, the, um, the, the, the box plot is the, the, uh, the, uh, the P97 and the P3, and then you have the more extreme ones up and above, and that's the place where you as your practice are at that moment, for instance. So you can see where am I as my practice. Uh, and this is done every two years, and now it is possible to show some uh, evolution of that. So. This is another way of showing the number of uh, prescriptions and, and what is prescribed. Um, uh, and this is done more in detail. If, uh, that's how it has changed over the years, for instance, from 2004 to 2007. And you see the different antibiotics and how it can, if you have changed your practice prescription. Great. That's it, that's, that's an example. Uh, so this is not the only thing that the government is doing. At the same time, every winter, they are uh, um, uh, launching a, a big media campaign to the population to tell them to take care, not to take too much antibiotics, not to take them uh, only for coughing and things like that. So uh, um, I, I don't know what I have to do with this one. Just, okay, there we go back. We have the same, but that's not, that's more, that's not a qualitative uh, discussion, but one on uh, economics, on prescription of gener generics. And then uh, we had one on the practice performance, um, which, well, is, is very large and is a very, uh, gives little information about quality. It's more about how many patients do you see, which is type of patients do you see, and you are compared to similar practices. But if you want to go, it's on the same site, and, uh, Perhaps you can, can put a presentation on the, on the website and then you can easily go onto it. So that's, these are data gathered um, on a national level by the government. Uh, but we also have, of course, a little bit of data collection by the medical college itself. And there we have the uh, EPA evaluation tool, uh, which we use with benchmarking and feedback within the VC tool instrument. We have, uh, for the moment, I think about 70 or 80 practices, which is about 10% of the practices in Flanders who are within the EPA evaluation. And this is normally the start of a three-year coaching process uh, for more than half of, the, of those practices. Uh, 
Um, at the end of the third year, we want those practices to make their own practice report because we think uh, the most powerful way of changing and uh, working on quality is gathering your own data and looking into them uh, because you can put forward your own priorities. This is the EPA tool for the people who don't know it um, with uh, the maximum, the average and the red line being your practice or the position of your practice. Um, but I want to show you one of my own practice where we for, oh, I missed the figure. I had a very nice figure here of my own practice and uh, more than 10 years of follow-up of control of feet of di diabetic patients, which we started about 10% and now reaching 80% every year. Some years going down to 60%, knowing that we have to uh, do a new effort and, and look into reasons why we, uh, we do not succeed to reach those 80%. So I think this is uh, far faster and far more stimulating to do it that way. So finally, we got some national data in Belgium. And that's for the first time, I think, and that's uh, quite unique in our history um, because it was not the culture of uh, working with data. Um, there is not yet a strategy to systematically use these data for quality support of practices, not at all. We hope to start with supporting local organizations of GPs and we think this may, might be a very important and valuable way of uh, starting quality improvement from those national data. But I think external data will not replace the gathering of internal data collection, which in my point of view is faster, closer to your own pro, uh, priorities as a practice, more reliable you are, uh, and less threatening, I think. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Pete.